Welcome back to Honest News. Well, brothers and sisters, total, total chaos, total mayhem uh, is getting ready to happen in this country. Well, not just in the United States, but globally. Uh, the total collapse um, of any sense of order uh, is getting ready to be removed. Uh, lawlessness is going to take over, and um, out of lawlessness will come forth the new world order. Sadly, sadly, uh, you know, this world is Satan's world right now. God, The God of this world is Satan. So, you know, I've got some things to share with you. They're, they're not uh, the most uh, exciting things, but at the same time, you know, our hope is not in this world. Amen? Our hope is in, in Jesus Christ. Our hope is in uh, eternal salvation through God's redemptive plan. Uh, so, it, it looks very bleak in this world. Men do, man does not have the answer. They don't have um, the answer. They don't have the solution. They think they do, which is the New World Order. They think by collapsing the U.S. dollar and by bringing the whole world under a one-world currency that somehow this is going to be a game-changer and this is going to be good. Um, but the process to bring in this new world order is very ugly. Did you hear what I said? I said the process of this new world order to bring it in is very ugly. And how many know there are those out there that believe that we're going to return to the gold standard but I will assure you, we will not be returning to a gold standard. Um, not only that, but right now, um, we're not sure if Donald Trump is going to fight the Fed and try to remove the Fed, or if he's actually part of the problem, keeping the Fed in, in position. So if he's friends with the Rothschilds, the Fed's not going anywhere. But let me tell you something. When Donald Trump sees everything that he's been priding himself that he has built since he's been president, when he sees all of that collapsing, um, when he sees that the interest rate being raised um, is causing the economy to um, implode, then he's either going to fight the Fed which he's already coming out negative, uh, his ne negative rhetoric. You know, he's already starting to speak against the Fed, which, as far as I can see, not very many presidents have ever done that. Um, that's pretty foolish to do if you're not friends with those who run the Fed, if you know what I'm saying. Now, that could be part of their plan as well, is to make you think Donald Trump is against the Fed as a distraction. Because it could be, and I'm leaning more towards Donald Trump not being, I was thinking he possibly could be another John Kennedy, another Kennedy. But the more I think about it, um, I see how much Donald Trump likes the, the United Nations. And so I tend to believe that he is all for a new world order. I guess you got to look at the outcome of what a new world order would mean for Donald Trump or what would it mean for billionaires, millionaires, what it would mean for the ruling class. Um, what is this new world order and what's it, what does it mean for them? Um, so we're not going to look at that right now, but I do want you to look at some scripture with me because I believe this is the direction everything's headed in right now. So don't listen to all these economists um, that, set, that tell you that gold is the thing to invest in. Remember, 
There's a reason why Jesus says to us in the book of Revelation, buy of me gold. Amen? There's a reason why he says that, buy of me gold. Because the world today is being told to buy gold from their investors, right? To get their gold from those that invest in gold and those that sell gold, um, to buy gold. And that's the answer. Um, or buy crypto. Um, uh, but listen, or buy silver for that matter. But <clears throat> we can see in Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19, that that's not going to be a good decision. I just recently was listening to, and I'm, I'm not a supporter in any way of Glenn Beck, but, um, and I know he's a Mormon, but I heard him saying something that made so much sense. This was, this was back a few years ago, and he was saying that the gold worldwide, globally, is being transferred all over the world. And I thought, wow. If that's true, that means that nobody really has a, a hold on their own gold, right? Now, if you look on the internet, you'll see that supposedly in Kentucky at Fort Knox, we have X amount of gold and this, and, and that our deficit in this country is more than the gold we have. Well, I was listening to what Glenn Beck was saying. And as I was studying Ezekiel 7, 19, I found out he's actually right about the gold. He's actually right about the gold. And that's why a lot of the gold is being melted down, by the way. That's why much of the gold of Germany that we had here in the United States, we were holding for Germany, uh, that gold has been melted down, a lot of it. And so we gave them back something that wasn't pure. Now, why would that be important not to give them back their gold bars, but to give them back melted down gold in a different form? Why? Because their name's not on it anymore. Their mark is not on it anymore. And so if they're willing to take that, then, then that's up to them. But they, I guess, what are you going to do? You're going to demand your gold back that doesn't exist anymore? Well, think about this. How about believing you're going to go back to the gold standard when there's no gold to go back to? What about that? Let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that we can walk in the light in this hour, that we must walk in the light, but that we can walk in the light. We don't have to walk in darkness as so many are walking in darkness, Lord, that are stumbling over one another and stumbling over the lies and the all those uh, pitfalls and snares and just a minefield out there, Lord, that we can steer away from and we can walk in the light in this hour and we can be safe. And Lord, we thank you that you give to us your word to light our path. We can walk in the light. David said, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you, God, that we have a lamp to light the way for our feet. We pray, Lord, that your people will be willing to receive that light so they won't walk in darkness. We know, Lord, that the night is coming and no man will be able to work, but you said, well, it's day to work. Well, that's talking about in the natural. We know very soon it won't be, it won't be, uh, it won't be day spiritually very much longer in this world the political and everything's going to become very dark it's all going to be dark we know lord gross darkness is going to take over the land and take over the people madness is going to take over lord but you said they that put your trust their, their trust in you lord you said that they shall be delivered but those that put their trust in gold and silver, Lord, you said they would not be delivered. So, God, we thank you that we can put our trust in you in this hour that we might be delivered. We plead your blood over 
the equipment, the software, Lord, the ministry, everything, Lord, that to get this message out. We pray, God, that it will break through the powers of darkness, Lord God, through the power and the prince of air, so that this truth will get to your people, like an arrow, Lord, that will reach them, Lord, reach its target. Oh, God, this arrow must reach your people. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel your presence, God. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19. They shall cast their silver in the streets. Who does that? Who does that? Who throws silver in the streets? Now, I think what this is talking about is people that have maybe precious metals or have even silverware or something, maybe some type of a silver, you know, that they have some kind of a uh, uh, a collectible thing that's made of silver. Or, and it also could do with silver coins. But it says they're going to throw their silver in the streets. And their gold shall be removed. And I looked up this word removed in the original Hebrew. You know what it means? It means exactly what Glenn Beck was saying. It means to be like a vagabond. In other words, it has to do with just drifting, uh, being shifted from one place to the next. In other words, you can't track it. It can't be tracked. It's all over the place. The gold shall be removed. What Glenn Beck was saying was, each country uses their gold to uh, lend to other countries. They shift the gold around by lending as a loan and paying off debt with gold. And it gets, it gets you know, transferred out there all over the world. And usually, if your stamp is on the gold, you know what gold is yours, right? Well, because they're melting down gold and the gold is becoming even skimmed off, that's right, impure, it's, re it's losing its intrinsic value. And a lot of this could be what leads to the mark of the beast, by the way, because the gold doesn't have its value anymore. We don't know altogether why um, this whole thing's going to shift to a mark of the beast, we also don't know for sure if the world's going to go away from some kind of a monetary system other than the mark of the beast, because the Bible doesn't say it's not going to. It just says without that mark, they will not be able to buy or sell. doesn't mean they're not still going to have some kind of a monetary system. I want you to think about that. So gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them. When? In the day of the wrath of the Lord. Are we in that time where God's wrath is coming? Oh, yes. Speaking of the day of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. You know, that's why we see kings, rulers, great men, Hiding in caves. Amen. They're gonna, it's going to get bad, people. It's going to get downright barbaric on this earth. Madness is getting ready to fill the land. Are you listening to me? Civilization is getting ready to break down globally. And the United States is not going to escape this. It's going to happen. So let's see what the next verse says. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. 
Are you listening, brothers and sisters? Now, let's take a look at this verse, just a few verses down from that verse. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place. For the robbers shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. The city is full of violence. We know that's what's happening right now in Chicago. How many know other cities are going to follow the same lead? Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen. Do you hear that? The worst of the heathen. And they shall possess their houses. See what happens when you don't serve the Lord? God will allow the worst of the heathen to come into this country and take your houses. Isn't that what we're seeing? Oh, yes. Who do you think's occupying those houses after the after the uh, housing uh, bubble, after all those people lost their houses here in this country? Who do you think is going to occupy those homes? Who do you think is already beginning to occupy those homes? Listen to me, people. Those homes are being occupied and are going to be occupied by what the book of Ezekiel says, the worst of the heathen. This is worse than Hitler letting his soldiers take over the homes of the Jews during the Holocaust, because this is going to be globally. The worst of the heathen are going to occupy the homes of the citizens of the countries. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Doesn't look good, does it? Folks, this is why it is so serious. It is so dangerous not to serve God. God will allow your enemies to pursue you. Are you listening? God will allow the worst of the heathen to come into this country. If you think, that Donald Trump is going to turn back this people that are coming right now across the southern border, you're sadly mistaken. He's not going to turn them back. It's already changing in the news. He, he said he wasn't going to let them in. Now he's going to make them wait. And now he's talking about tent cities. Are you listening? Eventually, they're going to be given special rights, and they're going to eventually live in your house if you do not repent, if you do not turn to God, if there's not repentance in America, the United States is going to be taken over by the worst of the heathen. What does that mean, the worst of the heathen? That means people from heathen nations, heathen countries, that idols, that serve idols. That's what America is going to be overrun with. It's already starting. How many know that? I'm not going to mention different, uh, different races. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to mention different countries as far as pinpointing certain peoples. I'm just going to tell you it's happening. Okay? I'm not going to mention the different, the different um, countries as far as the peoples. I'm not, we're not picking on anybody. I'm just telling you what God's judgment is. His judgment. Remember what he said to the children of Israel? He said, if you don't drive them out. Is that what he said? If you don't drive them out of the land of Canaan, he said, there'll be a thorn in your side. Is that what the Lord said? That's not what he said. He didn't expect his people to drive them off the land. What did he expect his people to do? Do not marry them. That's what the Lord said. He said, if you marry them, the heathen that have idol worship, that are idol worshipers, those that come in serving other gods, 
He said, they will be a thorn unto you. They'll be a thorn in your side. Okay? So what's happening in the United States right now? We're seeing heathen nations taking over America. That's what we're seeing. And the laws are going to change. We're seeing right now where certain ideologies are trying to take over the United States to make this country no longer a Judeo-Christian nation, right? That the, the principles, the values of this country, and if you think the charismatics are going to help, you need to understand the charismatics are opening their doors to, the, to, to even to Islam, okay? To ideologies that are against our values as Christians, as believers in Jesus Christ. So I want to make clear that there is no deliverance, folks, outside of Jesus Christ. There's no hope outside Jesus Christ. Are you listening? Right now, what we're seeing, and this is an invasion. How many know that? We're being invaded, the United States. And Donald Trump is a coward. I told you he wasn't going to try to uh, stop this caravan. And now he's giving in to the pressure. Um, and he is going to give 10 cities to these people. Now, listen, if these people end up getting into our country through due process, you know, going through the actual process that you're supposed to, to come into this country to become legal. If, if, if they're crying a solemn, if they want to come into the United States crying a solemn, you know, we're supposed to give them a solemn, right? But I've already said, and I said this before Donald Trump even said he was going to do this. I said what they need to do is need to put sanctions on Mexico, sanctions on Venezuela, right? Until they get their people and round them back up and, and have them go back to their nation. Um, is that the right thing to do? Putting pressure on these countries to take care of the problem. Now, we're dealing with people here. I'm not dealing with cattle, folks. Are you listening to me? Is it going to come down to dealing with people as cattle? I mean, is it eventually going to get there to where people are treated like cattle? If you're not branded with the United States brand, then your cattle's on our property. Hello? These are the cattle hands, right? This is about the plantation. It's all going back to that. But listen, this is not about a civil war internally in the United States only. This is about a war of the citizen, just the common people, with those that call themselves the ruling class. They very much want to have a plantation. They want to be the ones that are ownership of the cattle. You see why now uh, Jeremiah said, led his sheep to the slaughter? You see why he said that now? But I, I love what Paul the Apostle said. Paul said, Are we as sheep led to the slaughter? He said, nay. Amen. We are more than conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not led as sheep to the slaughter. The world may be, and they are. But brothers and sisters, you and I are not in that categorization. You and I are not in that group of people. We shouldn't be led as sheep to the slaughter. Do we not have a good shepherd? Amen. Is he going to allow us to be led to the slaughter? That's why it's so important to submit to him. Is he the good shepherd? Is he your good shepherd? Is he the one leading you? Do you know his voice? Does he call you by name? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody can be a sheep led to the slaughter, folks. So look at the next verse with me. 
Because it doesn't get better. It gets much worse. And how many know it's going to get worse before it gets better? Destruction cometh. And they shall seek peace. And there shall be none. I'm not making this stuff up, people. I'm not making this stuff up. Are you listening? It's going to get really bad, okay? And my heart's heavy, I'll tell you. My heart is heavy. Because I don't know how many are really listening. How many are really taking heed? How many of you are really taking heed? Because this is what's coming. This is what's coming. Ezekiel 7 verse 10. Behold the day. The day. The day of the Lord. Behold it is come. The morning is gone forth. And that's not. Morning, M-O-U-R-N. That's morning. The morning, like versus night. The morning is gone forth. In other words, it's just beginning. How many know that? The day of the Lord is just beginning. When, when this scripture is being fulfilled. Behold the day, but it's just morning. It's just getting started. The day of the Lord is gone forth. The rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded, pride hath budded. What's going to be the result? Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. Not a rod of correction, folks. A rod of wickedness. That's what's about to ensue. That's what's about to take over in America. None of them shall remain, nor nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them. The time is come, the day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. Folks, there's not going to be anything on the earth to be happy about. The party that's been going on where there are those that have been living large, so to speak, on having this party, The party's almost over. Amen. Now, they've been burning the candle at both ends for a long time now. And as they say, the chickens are coming home to roost. I'm here to tell you, time is up. Time is up. Are you listening? The handwriting is on the wall. Hello? The handwriting is on the wall, but who can interpret it? Who? How many ministers out there, how many preachers out there can interpret the handwriting on the wall? Only Daniel was able to interpret it. The scripture says that the king was shaking in his boots. Amen? His joints were, I mean, he was just, it, something got a hold of him to cause him to shake. But he did not understand the writing on the wall. And I wonder, do we? Do we see the handwriting on the wall in this nation? Are we going to stick our heads in the sand? Are we just going to say it's not so? 
because it is so. God's going to allow the worst of the heathen to take over this nation. That's right. He's going to allow them to eventually take the homes. God's allowing this, folks. You think people are just going to idly stand by or sit by and let their home be taken? No, it's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath. So in the midst of all this, are we hearing the truth? Are we hearing the truth? Do we know what the Lord is saying? Because I know what he's saying. He's saying, look up. That's what he's saying. He's saying, look up. Your redemption draweth near. Amen. He's saying, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. That's what he's saying. He's saying, look up. When you begin to see these things coming to pass, look up. Straighten up. So this is a heads up message, folks. Look up. Because even though the day of the Lord is drawing near, and even though it's darkness for the world, even though it's fury, even though it's wrath for this people, this is also the year of the Lord's redeemed. You can't get distracted by the reward of the wicked. They made their choice. Are you listening? You're not going to turn them if they don't want to be turned. You're not going to help them if they don't want to be helped. You're not going to help them if they won't listen. God told Jeremiah, he said, if they hear, they hear. If they forbear, they forbear. He said, they're a rebellious house. Amen? How many know dull of hearing in the scripture, in the book, in, in the New Testament, you looked at, it means to stick your fingers in your ears. That's what it means. It means you will not listen. You refuse to listen. Amen. And when a people gets to the place where they're sticking their fingers in their ears, they are, are giving themselves over to fear. Are you listening to me? You and I, brothers and sisters, cannot give ourselves over to fear. The Bible says because of fear, all their lifetime they were subject to bondage. But how many know that perfect love casteth out fear? There is no fear in love. Love is the fulfilling of the law. If you love the truth, you are not going to be in trouble. The strong delusion is coming to those that don't love the truth. Now, are you positive that the love that's in your heart is agape? Are you positive that it's the love that's shed abroad by the Holy Ghost? Is it his love? Or is it human love? Is it a love that's partial and shows partiality is it a love that shows respect to persons or is it a love that is impartial that is pure that is perfect even as our father in heaven is perfect hallelujah this is what it's going to take folks to escape to experience redemption We've got to let his love fill our hearts to the fullness. Amen? Can't be any element, not even a measure of human love left. That's why, that's why Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And when he said that to him, the first time he says, in a friendly love, right? Phileo. A friendly, 
love. But when he got to the agape love, when he said, Peter, do you love me? Peter did not, Peter did not know what he was talking about. And I believe that most today in the church, if you were to share the love of God with them in truth, they would not be able to receive his love. Because the world has decided that the worldly church today, those that are carnal, have decided they want what tickles their ears. They want something to feed their flesh. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. Hallelujah. Falling away first. That's what happened. They all left Jesus. And Jesus said to his own disciples, will you also go away? And Peter said, where are we going to go? Thou only has the words of eternal life. Where are you going to go, folks? Where are you going to go from this broadcast? Where are you going to go from this ministry? Where are you going to go and find the words of eternal life? Because I've got some hard things to tell you. I've got some things to tell you that the Lord is laying on my heart that, and it's, it's not going to be uh, sugar-coated. Terrible, terrible times are coming. Amen. And I've got to tell you the truth. Would you rather hear it from me? Or would you rather hear it from your government? Would you like to hear about it after the fact? Or do you want to hear about it before? Before it comes to pass. Hallelujah. Stay tuned. God bless you.